you want to implement a stock screen, you need to decide whether you're going to do a quantitative approach or a fundamental approach. I personally prefer a fundamental approach. And if you're doing that, you need to decide in general whether you're going to do a growth strategy or a value strategy. Let's talk now about how to implement a value strategy using a stock screen in Capital IQ. Um, just as um, a basic start to this idea, I want to fill out an acronym, IDEAS. This lists a number of approaches that you can use to implement that value screen. Let's just think about the letters in IDEAS. The I could be insider buying. In other words, you're looking for a signal from the people who are more knowledgeable about whether a stock is undervalued or overvalued. If insiders are making open market acquisitions, in other words, they're taking cash out of their own pocket and buying shares in the open market, that is a really strong signal from knowledgeable investors that the stock is likely to be undervalued. So what about the next letter, the D? That can be a decline in price. And studies have shown that investors tend to extrapolate recent past performance so if a stock has done really badly, and we're talking about extreme price moves over the past year, those are the stocks that investors price into an, uh, the price uh, expectation of continued underperformance. So they may be undervalued. What about the E in ideas? That's buying earnings at a favorable ratio to the market price. You want to buy earnings cheaply. What about the A? The A is buying assets cheaply. So you want to look at assets as a ratio of price. And the final one is this S. And we found that small market cap stocks, also those that are underfollowed by Wall Street, tend to offer higher performance. So that's just a starting point for uh, some ideas about how to implement a value screen. Remember, that traditional or orthodox uh, finance theory says there's, there's a positive relation between risk and return. But as people start to acknowledge the advantages of behavioral investing, what they know is that uh, you can often try and exploit those mistakes of typical investors who are so subject to fear and greed, and you can often identify undervalued strategies that are going to outperform, and it may not have to do with uh, the actual riskiness of the stocks. So let's take a look at Capital IQ, and let's try and implement a value screen. Let me start at the Capital IQ screen. This is the main screen that I got to by opening up a web browser and navigating to CapitalIQ.com. I can click on the screening tab and that will take me to this screen. What I'd like to do is just pull up a save screen actually to make this process a little quicker. So I'm going to pull one up that has got a screen based on market capitalization. It's got uh, equity type in there and uh, major U.S. exchanges. How do we implement a value screen? Well, if you go with that acronym IDEAS, the I is that insider buying. So you can find a lot of insider trading information right here. And I like to focus on those open market acquisitions because those are really the best signals. And you can find those open market acquisitions right here. You could select on that. and then continue to add this to a screen. So my process here is just to show you some of the basic criteria that you can add, but not actually go through with the implementation of this. Um, the D is decline in price. So one of the things that you can look at is you can look at the past return and you can see that it's got 30 day excess return relative to the sector, one month return, one year return. Um, you know, it's got a lot of information in here that you can actually use to uh, identify sort of the price momentum. So that's the D in uh, that ideas. What about the E, which is earnings at a cheap ratio to price? So you can find PE ratios here, and you've got the Ford PE ratio here. And a lot of flavors of this, you would just want to find a Ford PE ratio that is cheap, so you want to actually get a low number associated with this. You could put in something like 15, hit tab to add this in. It's probably not going to reduce it down that much. You may have to actually get a little less than that to reduce down the number of stocks it's finding in the screen. 
This gets it down to 528. It doesn't have to be the price per share compared to the earnings per share as we're seeing here. You could do ROE, which is going to give you a measure of you know, profitability and margins. You would like high net margins, high gross margins, high, high amounts of profitability. And that could be uh, ROE. It could be the gross margins here. It could be the net margins as well. Um, another possibility is to look at it on the firm level. So you might be able to take a look at that total enterprise value to the last 12 months EBITDA, which is the earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. What you would like to do is find a low value of this ratio because that numerator represents the price that you would pay to acquire the company on a net basis. And the denominator represents the most recent earnings. Um, you could also get forward earnings as well. Um, th this is a nice consistent comparison, which is something I'll talk about in another video. But what that means is you're comparing the overall net price of acquiring the firm to the overall cash flows that you could in general get if you acquired the whole firm. So you would want that to be low. So you could put this down as a five, which is pretty low number for this. Should knock it down a little bit. Yeah, it knocks it down quite a bit. Um, another possibility is to buy assets um, at a low multiple to price. So you could also search for things like price to book. In other words, you're comparing the price per share to the book value per share. And you could do it on a historical basis or on a forward basis as well. And you can also Look at the S in ideas, which is that market capitalization. And we've already done that a little bit here by uh, this first one, where it basically looks at only stocks with market capitalizations that are under $20 billion. So those are some ideas. You remember, I want you to come up with a, you know, your unique own screen. So you know, happy hunting. Go out and play around with this. Try and find metrics that uh, you feel like have worked in the past, but also are going to work going forward.